absolute genius. So sit down, buckle up, and get ready for takeoff. Each show will introduce you to a different genius. An amazing person who had a genius idea which shaped the world. And they will inspire us to come up with our own genius idea at the end of each show. But will it be any good? Will it be any good? It'll be absolute genius. And on today's show, we'll be exploring the power of food. Oh, look at that! And finding out what fuels our sporting champions. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Now take this awful thing off my face. <laughs> Today we're going to introduce you to a scientist who had a real appetite for experiments. A genius who helped us to understand what's in our food and also what food to eat to stay fit and healthy. In fact, her recommendations helped this country to become the healthiest it's ever been. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you... Elsie Widdison. Hello, chaps. <laughs> ah, time for lunch. Inspired by Elsie, we're going to be coming up with our own genius challenge later on in the show. When we put the power of food to the test by joining the army cadets. Keep going! What are you made of? <laughs> Do more! But first, let's learn a bit more about her. Widdison was born in 1906, in the days when food was something people just ate. They didn't know too much about what's in it and how it affects our bodies. These days, we all know that you're supposed to eat your five a day. You know, things like apples, carrots, your greens. And you can see everything that's contained within our food just by looking at the packaging. But in those days, accurate information like this didn't always exist, so it was hard to work out what you should be eating to stay healthy. Our genius did something about it. She worked out the nutrition of food, what's in it and how it affects our bodies. For the first time, people had accurate information about what they were eating, all in one book. Widdison's genius idea was to write a book that told us what's in our food. It listed things like how much energy all our foods were giving us. She wrote it with her partner in science, Robert McCants, and it was called... The Chemical Composition of Foods. Catchy, eh? And she didn't just look at energy. The book also listed important nutrients, like the carbohydrates, protein, fats and minerals that we find in all our foods. Genius! To find out more, we've come to King's College in London, where Widdison studied nutrition, the science of food. And to tell us about her genius work and experiments, we're meeting up with CBBC resident food expert, Stefan Gates. So what exactly is Elsie's book about? Well, it's basically about lots of numbers. Right. <laughs> I mean, it looks really boring. It's yeah. lots of, lots I of can charts. confirm that. It really does look dull. Like it a does look dull. Book. Lots of numbers. But what's inside it is absolutely amazing. World-changing stuff. Um, she took foods and basically ripped them apart and tried to understand what was inside them. This piece of cheddar cheese. One piece of cheese. Good. Now, she's found out that in this cheddar cheese, there are 416 calories. And literally, you've got everything in here. You've got a bit of chocolate. Who likes chocolate? You like chocolate? Mm. That's all right. Chocolate there. So we can find out uh, what's in chocolate. Uh, again, lots of energy, uh, protein, a lot of fat. Once you know what's in food, then you can tell what you need to eat. Would you like to be bigger, better, stronger, faster, cleverer? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all of the above. You're fine with it, as, as you are, but yeah. I, I, well, me too. One of the most important things we need from food is energy, which is measured in calories. The average adult needs from two to two and a half thousand of them a day. Widdison's genius book told us exactly how many calories and other nutrients were in all the different foods we eat. This information became essential during the Second World War. Food was scarce and the government rationed supplies. Widdison helped work out the basic foods each person needed to stay healthy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an Elsie. We're going to take some food and recreate the experiments that she did. So. Really common food here. Mm. Pizza. Pepperoni. Pizza. A little pepperoni pizza there and some other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> about that. Carrot, broccoli and beans, good for you. Now, the thing is, all of these foods would have been very familiar to Elsie. I wanted to try something that she wouldn't have tested. So maybe we'll take her work and move it forwards and look at a food of the future. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah. lift that lid. 
go. What? Oh my goodness, look at them! It's got maggots in it. These are mealworms. Yes, we're going to experiment with these. Here's some Stefan prepared earlier. Now these are ready to eat. Don't so, look, lads. There's some of your mates off. over there. They're looking a bit crispy. Time to give them a try. But as I'm vegetarian, I'll leave that to the others. After three, ready, lads? Yeah. One, two... What? Hang on, wait. What? <laughs> What's that long kind of brown oh, line that's just, going that's down just the middle? Oh, that's just its intestines. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Weirdly, they're quite nice. They're like, I mean, they're oh, basically they're really? crisps. Mm. They, they I mean, like they crisps. taste very much like crisps. They're yeah. actually pretty tasty. <laughs> they're really? Seriously. Now, you can mix them with a little bit of, um, of smoked paprika. Mm. You can make them taste oh. like smoky bacon. Nice. It's pretty good stuff. Smoky bacon maggots. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They've already got it's a bit of flavour to them, though. It's it not is, bad, but... is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to do one of Elsie's tests to find out how many calories there are in it. How do we do that? Come and follow me. We already know how many calories our everyday foods contain. Carrots, 35 calories per 100 grams. Broccoli, 33 calories. Baked beans, 84 calories. Pepperoni pizza, 250 calories per 100 grams. But how many calories are in mealworms? To help us do our own experiment, we've turned to genius assistant Rosie. She's used a nifty bit of kit called a bomb calorimeter and worked out exactly how many calories there are in mealworms. Now, a little guesstimation here. I reckon calorie-wise, they're going to be really low. Something like a carrot. Healthy, good for you, worms. Yeah, I'd say so. What's the uh, final calorie content of those lovely little worms? Um, it's not as low as you think. It's 421 calories. What? 100 grams. Fantastic. Wow. That's almost as many calories as in a big bag of crisps. That's quite a lot. There's yeah. nothing yeah. like a, a carrot. So uh, there you go, right? No more real worms. Yeah, no for more real worms for me. <laughs> OK, <laughs> just stick to uh, pizza. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like Elsie, we've measured the calories in our food. Anyone for a bowl of mealworms? Mmm. The pages of Widdison's book are full of calories, but we want to learn more about what a calorie is and how much energy it contains. Time to meet chemist and genius helper, Professor Andrea Sella. Hi, Andrea, how are you doing? Hey, Hi, good, to, good to meet you. Well, we're trying to understand uh, the science behind food a lot more. And one thing that Elsie had in every single one of her charts is uh, the amount of calories in food. But we don't actually know what that means. What, what are calories? Well, they're a measurement of how much energy there is in a food. Now, if we were to take something like this, this olive oil here, either we can eat it and burn it inside, sort of use it as a fuel for ourselves, or alternatively, do what the Greeks did, which was to actually use it in a tea light. To show us the energy in food, Andrea is going to burn 75 calories worth of olive oil in this tea light. Scientists work out the calories in food by burning it and measuring the heat that's produced. So uh, when we ingest the olive oil, it does a very similar thing to what it's doing to the water. It, it gives us energy and it gives water energy, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only difference is, of course, we don't have a flame inside us, so our, our bodies process the fuel much more cleverly. But the end result is the same, and the interesting thing is that you run warm, right? right. You're hot. Of course. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Where do we go from here? Come on, chaps, there's work to be done. But those 75 calories don't look like they're really doing much. I mean, it's heating the water, which is great, but there's not much effect. Well, no, I know, it's, it's not really that dramatic. If you want dramatic, yeah. and you want, you want dramatic, well, of course. then what we have to do is speed it up. And to speed up the process, Andrea is going to take 75 calories worth of digestive biscuit, the same energy as there was in our olive oil tea light, and mix it with liquid oxygen. We're doing the same thing our bodies do, using oxygen from the air to get energy from food. But we're going to massively speed that process up. OK, now take the biscuit and put it on the tabletop, just here. That's great. Don't go setting fire to biscuits at home! We've got an expert to help us. Can we stand back? I think you might. We'll <laughs> see. You'll tell me in a second. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that! <laughs> Whoa! Woo! Ooh, nice. Toasty. <laughs> that's amazing. So, that's what calories do. Widdison was onto something powerful here. 
Yes, food is powerful, but I'm not sure about the worms. Later in the show, we'll be using the energy in food to fuel our own genius challenge. <laughs> but first, how exactly does our body turn that food and all those calories into energy? Who better to tell us than our resident genius, Fran? <laughs> Hey. Who has a habit of popping up just when you need her most. Man, what's this? Well, this is going to come later, but we know, right, that food's got energy in it with calories, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you think you get that energy from the food? What do you do to it to begin with? Eating it. What, yeah, you, you eat, eat it. Digest and yeah. stuff. And all the digestion does, right, is break the food down into the smallest bits it can. But then, with the smallest bits of food, it makes energy parcels. We're using these bottles of lemonade and some mints to create our own energy parcels. But not firmly wedged. Yeah, got it. So we've made these little energy parcels, and this is a representation of what you've got in your body. So when you digest the food, it's broken down into those really small bits, then they react with oxygen to make little energy parcels that can then be moved around your body and used whenever your body needs to. Energy parcels ready, time to release that energy. Here we go. Hang on. Right, let's back, 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 back. That's uh, it, that's it. Let's Give it a bit of a fizz. Yours are going uh, in. Uh, right, right, release your cock, release your cock. Give me release the cock. Release your cock. Release your cock. recap what's happened. Uh, we uh, tried to do an experiment and it went a little bit wrong. So this is mark two. We're going to try and make it work this time, right? Pretend you never saw the earlier thing. Please work. Are you ready? Oh, Are you ready? ready. Are you? Yes. 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 Right. Drop it in. Drop it in. Oh. OK, right. Yeah, leave it a bit. Leave it a bit. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh. Oh. get the energy from food. She did it. Ladies and gentlemen, Fran Scott. So that's how the body releases energy. Anything extra you don't use is stored up as fat. We've seen that food contains energy through calories, but we want to find out what the best food is to power our bodies. I think to do that, you need to go to one of the top sporting teams in the world. What, like New Zealand All Blacks or maybe the home of the Olympics, Athens? No, nope, no, nope, I've got just the place. Where? Manchester. I love Manchester! We've come to the Manchester Velodrome, the home of British cycling, to learn what the top athletes eat to power their performance. Well, one in particular, it's genius Paralympian Dame Sarah Story. She's won an incredible 11 gold, 8 silver and 3 bronze medals in both swimming and cycling across six Paralympic Games. So, Sarah, why is food so important in your profession? Well, in any sport, it's really important to have the right food because if you put the wrong fuel into an athlete, they're not going to perform very well. It's about getting the right balance of food. Athletes need more than the recommended five a day because you're burning so many um, vitamins and minerals. And then you also need some good fats as well. So we're not talking about the saturated fats that you find in a fry-up. Yeah. We're talking about the fats that you might find in oily fish, um, yogurt, the dairy products and that kind of thing. So before a race, do you have to have a, a massive meal to get all those carbs and that energy in and then go straight out onto the racetrack or do you stop eating like a few hours before? On actual race day then you'll eat probably between two and three hours ahead of the race depending on the sort of race that it is and if you're in road racing you'll eat during the race because you may be on the bike for four or five hours during the race and you'll need to get that um, sugar inside you so you have instant energy. How do you, how do you eat whilst you're riding in a race? <laughs> what, and what do you eat? Sometimes we wrap up tiny pieces of jam sandwich because the bread's really good for filling your stomach and the jam's really good for being simple sugar. So what would happen if you put your hand in your bag and then you pulled out a slice of pizza during the race and you ate that? Well, you'd tell the person who'd put it in the pocket off to start with. <laughs> they should never have given you pizza in the first place. But you should never have those bad foods that aren't going to digest quickly before an event. But that's not to say that if you got to the top of a mountain and you're absolutely exhausted during a six or seven hour ride, that you wouldn't have a can of cola and, and a bar of chocolate to give you that instant sugar hit. Because if you're bonking out and you've got no energy at all, you're about to collapse, that gives you the instant hit that you need to be able to carry on and get back home. What's it called, bonking out? Yes. Is that the professional term for it when is. you collapse from no, no right. sugar? Yeah, because right? you've got nothing left in your body. Oh, wow. Let's well, get some fizzy drinks and some chocolate. Yeah, otherwise we'll bonk out. Mm. Right. Top athletes like Sarah eat a balanced, healthy diet. 
they burn so much energy they can get away with the odd sugary treat. And here are some other foodie facts about sports stars. It's the Genius Top 5. At 5, Arsenal footballer's favourite treat is banoffee pie. The bananas and sugar provide a great energy boost on the pitch. Love it. At 4, Tour de France champion Bradley Wiggins fueled up for the big race by eating a bowl of porridge at bedtime. Three At the 2008 Olympics, the world's fastest man, Usain Bolt, won three gold medals while eating a diet of chicken nuggets. Can I take your order, please? At two, Paralympic swimming star Ellie Simmons eats loads of seafood to help her swim like a fish. Just kidding! We made that one up! And at number one, the world's most successful Olympian swimmer, Michael Phelps, eats more for breakfast than most people eat in a whole day. So far, we've discovered that Elsie wrote a genius book telling us all about what's in the stuff we eat. And we've seen for ourselves how the calories in food give us energy. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Now it's time to see how our bodies can use that energy through exercise. To get us going, it's genius sports scientist Dr Howard Hurst. Hello, Howard. Howard. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So we want to find out how much energy uh, I am going to use on the track. OK, no problem. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to fit you up with this gas analyzer. So we're going to monitor this gas. <laughs> <Certainly> <laughs> don't. Blimey. We're that. going to look at how much oxygen <laughs> you're using, how much carbon dioxide you're going to produce, and from that we can look at what your energy expenditure is as you're cycling around the track. Okay. That's amazing. So, if you want to pop that over your head... Yeah, this is looking comfortable, isn't it? It does have to be quite tight, so... Are you going to be able to breathe through this? Yeah. <laughs> How's that feel? Yeah. OK, yeah. so what we need to do now is just put this final piece in. This is oh, the bit that actually just top it off. <laughs> monitors your oxygen uptake. Brilliant. All right, let's go and burn some. Ready to go? Yeah. All right. Yeah. While Dick's doing four laps of the track, that's one kilometre in total, Howard can monitor the amount of calories he's burning. Faster! One last lap! Give it some welly! Just when you think you've seen your mate in every possible situation, suddenly this pops up. <laughs> Time for the results. Can I take this awful thing off my face? <laughs> So, Howard, am I going to end up waking up looking like David Beckham tomorrow? Um, highly unlikely. No. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> How many <laughs> calories did I burn? Uh, OK, so during that one kilometre, you did 21 calories. 21. That doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, that's about four crisps. <laughs> Not four <laughs> packets, just four crisps. All that exercise, he was absolutely oh. exhausted at the end of the day. One crisp crisps. a lap. So to burn off that packet of crisps I ate earlier, all 180 calories of it, I'd have to do 36 laps of the track. That's nine kilometres. But that seems like a ridiculously large amount of exercise mm. for a very small... Something that we all do in everyday life yeah. and you don't even think about it. Well, you're burning energy all the time. So just standing here now, we're burning energy. Brushing oh, yeah. your teeth takes about two minutes, which is about the same amount of time it took you to do that, Dick. Yeah. That's about six calories. So in terms of burning the energy, exercise is far more efficient than just sitting around doing nothing. And while I recover, here's a not-so-clever way to experiment with food. Time for the not-so-genius idea! In the summer of 2005, there was an attempt to make the world's biggest ice lolly. At 25 feet high and weighing 17 tonnes, it would have been a record breaker. But in the hot summer sun, the kiwi and strawberry flavoured giant lolly melted before it could be pulled upright. People were sent running from the sticky torrent and firefighters closed streets as they tried to hose away the gooey mess. A not so genius way to experiment with food. Discovered how different foods can give us energy through calories. Yes, even mealworms. Mm. And we've learned how Widdison helped Britain survive wartime with her genius knowledge about what food to eat. Now, inspired by Widdison's discoveries about the energy food can give us, we're ready to reveal our own genius idea. Yeah, we've decided to test out our physical fitness by joining the Army Cadet Force. Move left, left, turn, by the front. Get a move on! For our genius idea, we're going to attempt a tough physical challenge inspired by Widdison's wartime experiments. She tried living off rations to see if she'd still have the energy to climb hills and mountains. 
So we're going to do the same. Well, we don't have mountains, but we do have a gruelling assault course and shouty instructors. Hello. Come on, you three, let's go! Move! All right, move! OK, recruits, come on. It's hammering it down with rain. Well, you better go with it so you can get inside. Hurry up, boys. Your inner is oh. flying away. Oh. Putting up the tent's the easy oh. part. Time to get ready for the challenge itself. Here's the plan. Our genius idea to fuel up on World War II-inspired food rations. Our challenge, to complete a series of physical tests, including battling an assault course and scaling a 12-metre wall. Hopefully our rations will give us enough energy to run across the countryside all the way to the finish line. Before we get started, let's see what our cadets fuel up on for their training. Ah, oh, this is better, isn't it? Mm. Nice and warm in a very well put up tent. Yeah, better than ours. Uh, but we've got to eat some food for energy for our genius challenge. Uh, what kind of food do you eat in the cadets? Well, typically, a uh, British Army soldier would have to live um, for 24 hours off the contents of one of these ration packs. This Ooh, box right. will last 24 hours? 24 hours, that's correct. British Army ration pack has got 4,000 calories. Um, and it's got your three main meals of the day that you need, and also you've got snacks as well. That's a lot of calories. Is that because you do a lot of physical activity? It is. So it's actually a meal in this bag. Yeah. Look, chicken, pasta and mushrooms in there. Mmm, Jess, Joe, I bet mm. you're looking forward to this, are you? Nom, 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 nom. Well, I don't fancy a boil in the bag for my tea. Let's see what we've got in our tent. Is that it? A vegetable pasty? Yep. There wasn't much meat around during the Second World War. Widdison's advice was to eat loads of fresh veg like cabbage and potatoes to stay healthy and full of energy. So we've got a meat-free pasty. Yeah, lots of veg in there, a bit of potato, pastry, loads of carbs, energy. About 500 calories worth. How are you feeling about um, the big genius challenge? Well, it's a lovely day for it, isn't it? Come on, eat it up! Fueled up and ready to go, it's finally time to put those rations to the test with our challenge. Stand by! If our genius is right, we should have enough energy to get us to the finish line. Go! Come on! And we're off! Get a good grip of that container, let's go! Sprinty, start your... Come on! Come on! OK, get the containers, let's go! Keep going! Oh, I'm exhausted already. I hope not. It's press-ups next. Oh, that was a tough one. Do that again. Wait for your teammate. Come on, Pasty. Give us some energy. Come on, get a grip of that. Straight under. Come on, come on, drag it. Keep moving. Well done. Ready? Get it. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Well done. How many? Come on. Come on. Twelve. Come on. Come on. What are you made of? Seventy. Two more. Eight. Two more. Come on. Yeah, the shouting really helps. Cheers, mate. It's on your feet. I'm soaking. One, two. Come on. Three, four, five. Drench. Man down. It's the finish line. Four. Five. Come on, Dom. Oh. Come on, Dom. Up you get. Burn those rations. <laughs> And we've made it. Our rations have given us the energy to battle the first part of the challenge, but it's not over yet. I'm wet, I'm exhausted, my muscles are aching, and we've only done part one. And I'm wearing a silly hat. Hold on to your hat, because this next challenge is this 12-metre wall. The rain's coming down. We have to go up. And I'm afraid of heights. Stand by! Go! Keep ah. going! But where you put your feet? Well done, keep going. Ah. Well done, we've got one at the top almost. He's doing great, considering he's scared of heights. He's doing a really good job. Come on, mate! That's it! The energy from our genius rations are still powering us on, oh, right to the yeah. top! <laughs> you can laugh. Let's see how well you do trying to get down again. <laughs> well, that's one way to save energy. <laughs> that was harder than I thought. Good luck, Dick. Don't look down. 
Dick. But the thing is, just when we think it's all over, we've done this this whole course. We've climbed up this and come back down again. I think we've still got one more thing to do. Yes, the final part of the challenge is a run to the finish line. Let's hope we have some energy left. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, Pasty. Not far okay, now. Okay, let's go. Come on, keep up. Trace over what sells over the style. Keep going. Well done, let's go! Watch where you put your feet! Well done! Loads of energy being here now. Come on! Half a mile to the finish line, and it feels like we've just about used up all our Keep energy. Going. Work hard! But with a bit of luck, the energy from our genius rations will see us through. Hang in there, Dick, we're almost there! See the finish line. Think of Winnison. We're doing it for her. Straight through is the finish. Let's go. Well done. We've done it. Absolute genius. Well done, boys. That's right. We battled the assault course, scaled the climbing wall, and made it to the finish line. We've had a blast learning how our genius Widdison uncovered what's in our food, tested her genius experiments on these tasty morsels, and we've even seen how our bodies turn it all into energy. Oh. Well, Elsie, it was because of your discoveries that we as a nation were able to survive through the Second World War and become the healthiest our nation has ever been. Not only that, but we were also able to complete the Genius Challenge. Elsie Widdison, you are an absolute genius. Oh, thank you, boys. You're very kind. Right, little cheeseburger, yeah. triple fat and shit. Don't wobble it. I'm not doing anything. Just stand still, then. Aye, aye. Uh, 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 